We've got an unknown subject moving south. Uh, it seems to be a zero one. All right. Um, we need some more information on this. Okay, we'll check that. Welcome back to Cars Moving Parts and a very special episode because today is the first episode in English language. In the past we always did our episodes in German because, well mainly because we are German but this one had to be in English because today I'm sitting in one of the best cars of today and this car is from the United States of America. So a big salute to you folks on the other side of the pond and welcome everybody to the Chevrolet Camaro ZL1. This car has the standard 6.2 liter V8, but it is not the LT1 from the SS, it's the LT4, and there is a huge difference between these two engines. Listen. That wine is a 1.76 liter Eaton root type supercharger. So this engine develops 6. 159 horsepower and 881 newton meters of torque. This is not the first car this engine was fitted to. It has also been fitted to the Corvette Z06. It lets this car go from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 3.6 seconds and up to a top speed of 318 kilometers an hour. So this is a pure blue-blooded supercar. Of course we know. This car was engineered to be termed as a muscle car. But since it is, as near as it makes no difference as fast as a Ferrari 458, we thought the name supercar would suit it quite good as well. Although the actual generation of this Camaro of course was set up for insane straight line speed, it doesn't end here. Due to its magnetic right control and its independent 5-link rear axis suspension, it became very good at cornering as well. It is not a surprise then, that the Camaro's last generation again is taking part in several racing classes, such as GT4 or the NASCAR series. From the outside, the ZL1 can be diverted from other Camaros by its huge front splitter and the ZL1 rear spoiler. The 20-inch dark graphic premium paint forged aluminium wheels are exclusively for the ZL1 too. From the inside you will spot the full Alcantara steering wheel and the Alcantara Recaro seats with a ZL1 badge on it. The infotainment system of course offers everything a modern muscle car driver needs, such as Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, Wi-Fi, SatNav and many many more. The Camaro ZL1 then seems to be a bit of an egg-laying woolly milk sow. It can do nearly everything you could ask for in daily business. You can take the kids to school, you can do your weekly shopping, you can cruise to an appointment thanks to its different settings on its drive mode selector and thanks to its powerful LT4 6.2 liter supercharged V8, you can have a hell of a fun with it on country roads and especially on the racetrack. The transmission is a 10-speed automatic gearbox called 1L90 Hydramatic. It is said to shift as fast as a double clutch system, but of course it's lighter. And to make something clear right from the start, this is not the same gearbox fitted to the updated SS model. That's a 10L80 from a Silverado truck. 
such a glorious soundtrack. <laughs> Honestly, it feels like we're sitting on a big, angry thoroughbred. And even if you're not going very fast, every time you come near the throttle, it becomes alive. It, it, it wakes up. It's, it's nervous. It's, it's almost edgy. Great, great car, really. The Camaro was unveiled in 1966 as a competitor against the Ford Mustang, the first real pony car. The Mustang was designed to be fast and affordable for young people who are often not very solvent. This car became such a big success that Chevrolet had to react. So Chevrolet reacted and two years later they presented the Camaro, a car built for the same purpose as the Mustang. But nobody at Chevrolet made a secret out of this. One day, when a journalist asked what Camaro would mean then, an employee said, well, Camaro, that's a tiny, mean animal that eats Mustangs. That's a statement, isn't it? 1969 then was the year of the Camaro ZL1, the most powerful version of the Camaro. But its birth wasn't that simple. Until that day, the Z28 was the most powerful and very popular version of the Camaro. One day, some of the guys from the management floor said that, for some reasons, Chevrolet had to build engines not bigger than 400 cubic inches, which is about 6.6 .6 liters. Well, Ford had 7 liter engines and Chrysler even 7.2. So it didn't make sense to some of the employees and, more importantly, to some of the engineers of COPO, the Central Office Production Order, the Department of Chevrolet for Special Wishes. They then secretly developed a special car you could order by writing the numbers 9560 on your order. And the customers who did that received an absolute brutal machine. From the outside, this Camaro looked like an ordinary V6, but underneath there was a 7-liter V8 made entirely out of aluminium. It was said to develop around 430 horsepower, but none of those handcrafted engines developed less than 550 horsepower and over 600 newton meters of torque. It could do not to 62 miles an hour in 5.3 seconds. And mind you, we are talking about 1969. And a quarter mile? That was dealt with in 11.6 seconds. The Camaros then crossed the line at nearly 200 kilometers an hour. On the downside, this car was very expensive. It cost around $7,000, nearly twice as much as a standard SS model. So Copo needed years to sell all those ZL1s, which makes this car very, very rare today. But never mind. If you are into fast and, in terms of European brands, exotic cars, and you want to spend around 90,000 euros, why not buy one of these? It is much cheaper than its European supercar rivals. And just as fast. You can sense from the first moment on your driving this car that you'll be in the next ditch if you overdo it. And you know what? I like that. You have to stay awake. You have to be alert. But if you take your time to get used to this beast and find its sweet spot, then you're not just faster than most other cars on the street, you'll also have a hell of a fun. Well, since we are in Germany, it is obvious that we wanted to find out how fast it really is. So we took it to the Autobahn.
So, thank you, thank you for this great experience. I'm sure I won't forget about that. This is an utterly exciting and very, very fast car. It is much, much cheaper than its European rivals. And best of all, this car is just different, because in contrast to many other modern cars all over the world, it was not engineered or built to be eco-friendly or sustainable in the way modern politics want it to be. We all know that perhaps one day the last petrol station will close its doors and will make way for another kind of transport. But here, now, today, it is quite a good feeling knowing that this day hasn't come yet. Er hat seine Schuldigkeit getan und möchte ohne Nummernschilder in Ruf werden. Das müssen wir ihm, glaube ich, mal sagen. Ich glaube, wir sagen ihm das mal. Soll ich das kontrollieren oder ist das jetzt ordentlich? Schübe! Da ist es. Du musst auf die Nanosekunde treffen, sonst gibt es einfach wieder weg. Hier suchst du dir eins davon aus. Ja, reicht, 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 reicht. Alles klar, super. Das reicht nicht, Leute. Und jetzt, jetzt. Schleunigspur ist, da liegt Zeug. Da liegt... Alter, das ist... Es regnet hier heißes Gummi. Ja, recht, recht normal, aber das ist ja wahr. Sind halt... Ja, sollten sich auch aufwärmen. Alter, was ein Monster. Ja. 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 